state your name, age, and who you're racing for. Uh, Randy Reichardt with Above and Beyond Cancer, powered by Bike World, and I am the ripe age of 40. Racing Amazing. age this year would be 41, though. There we go. Uh, and Randy, you are joining us out of Iowa, am I correct? That is, yeah, right in uh, the capital, which is Des Moines, Iowa, which is right in the Midwest of the United States. Awesome. Um, and Randy, when you're not riding your bike or tra training and racing, what, what do you like to spend your time doing? What's a fun activity you do? <laughs> Well, uh, I've got uh, I've got a young family, so I spend a lot of time with them, and uh, um, we we explore quite a bit. So we'll do anything from to fishing um, to different activities outdoors, uh, primarily. Um, but uh, other than that, I've got a lot of different passions. Uh, but cycling is definitely the the primary. Amazing, you're keeping them keeping them active, keeping them outdoors. I like it. Absolutely. Um, and Randy, how long have you been racing bicycles for? Um, so I took a brief hiatus um, when I was in my late 30s, but I started in my late 20s when I was in college. Uh, I was in Iowa City and there was a great environment there with some really good people that, that showed me the way. Um, I'm one, I was one of those individuals that showed up on a um, triathlon bike for a group ride and um, getting dropped over and over, but they continually asked me to come and regardless, I was coming anyway. So started there and that was, oh boy, that was, um, that was about 19 years ago. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that, but it was about 19 years ago in Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, I've been back into it for about nine years. Um, didn't start out riding that much though. I think I was probably putting in, you know, at most, five hours a week for the first couple of years. And um, and then I started to get a little bit more serious here within the last two years. Um, and now I've got to get a little bit more serious being that the team is getting faster and faster. So it's uh, it's fun to uh, be motivated by the team and, and the races that we're going to be going to. You're doing all right. You've got a long and illustrious career behind and ahead of you. So Let's see what the future holds. Um, oh, now, Randy, I'm looking here at the Above and Beyond Cancer website here, and under your rider profile, it says you're a sprinter of an, and more of an all-rounder. So, um, what's kind of a, the courses that you like to race on? Yeah, so um, I like short, punchy um, courses. Circuits are my favorite uh, because you can really kind of play um, play out different. Um, advantageous roles throughout that course so you can analyze it but it's not per se a crit where it's you know 1k so i like short punchy climbs um and sprinting out of smaller groups i wouldn't say i'm a true sprinter by any means and i still have some work to do uh to certainly get my get my snap up to form amazing um and randy you guys at abc are both an indoor team and an outdoor team um, and you guys have been finding quite a lot of success indoors with riders like um, Timmy Bauer and uh, Matt Usborn. Um, so for you personally, what was your first introduction to virtual racing? Um, it, was, it was four years ago um, and it's just like a lot of other people. Um, we, you know, in Iowa, we have some cold winters uh, but probably even more importantly, um, we just got busier and busier as 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 we do. Um, and as you know, with a growing family, uh, I only had so much time, and I needed to really concentrate um, where I could. And my passion pushed me in areas that, while well, I wanted to do certain goals later on and do those goals, I had to really um, fine tune the efforts that I was putting in and um, that led me to uh, the trainer. But now um, with the concentration and what we've got um, through the virtual platforms, RGT is, has been a, a breath of fresh air because not only do you get to uh, race with you know, your teammates, team members around the, around the world, quite frankly, we've got riders all over the world, um, but you get to do them in, on platforms 
that you're going to be racing in real life. And some of the other teams that can't say that because they're just e-racing teams, but we're a little bit different being that we've got a hybrid approach. We've got basically three different models that we are utilizing. The first is the traditional road season. Um, and the second is e-racing season. And then the last is the gravel racing series, season. So for this year coming out into 2021, it'll be a really nice balance uh, because the traditional road season can be so late this year that in the middle of the summer, we get to go do some really cool um, adventures uh, through the gravel racing series. Amazing. Um, and Randy, going off of that question there, um, as you are in a bit more of a leadership role within your team, and how have you kind of altered um, how you structure the team and how the team functions throughout the year? Yeah, it's a great question, um, and it's not easy to do. Uh, so we have expanded the team quite uh, quite a bit this year. Uh, so we have uh, 17 riders uh, total this year. And the reason why we did that is so we can um, offset uh, different people's performances. Uh, so we've got e-racing that has been taking place. And one of our series in RGT is just wrapping up uh, the Echelon Racing Series, which is a great series. Uh, Eric Hill did an amazing job with that. So we've got riders that have been uh, in better form there, but um, we have really concentrated on making sure that um, our riders aren't going to get burnt out. So we are um, still kind of in the off season phase. And we've got training camps coming up. Um, we've in Boulder, Colorado and in Iowa. Um, and then we're going into gravel race and, and then we're going into uh, the traditional road season. So um, we're taking it as a kind of an easy ramp up, but we've got guys that are um, more um, pinpointed in the e-racing series. Guys like Usborn and, and uh, Timmy. Uh, Campbell's done unbelievably well as, as well. Um, but they're going to take a little bit, a um, little bit of a lull, maybe a little bit less intensity, gain some more miles, um, kind of the early spring and into summer, and then they'll be ramping back up into um, into the racing season as well, the the road racing season. So we've got 17 guys. Um, some are going pretty well right now. Other guys are just just getting started. They're building up, and so that allows us to do each one of those those different platforms. That's a very insightful answer, I like it. Um, and to touch on riders like Campbell Parrish, and uh, I don't know how to say it, but Cinder, Parrish and Brian, if I'm saying that right. Cinder, um, yeah. We're a little bit younger juniors. Um, how, how are you um, sort of helping to mold their careers? Yeah. The, well, thanks for that question, because that's that's one of our missions, actually, um, is to launch riders into full time professional careers in cycling. We want our riders to go to the next level. We're not trying to hold them back. We're trying to give them as many opportunities as we possibly can. And that's a bit unique uh, where you invest in a rider, you invest in their time. Yes, you want them to succeed, but you want them to succeed as long as possible in your team. And we want them to succeed in our team and beyond our team. So we're trying to launch these riders um, and these racers up to the next level. And we need to do so in a manner that isn't necessarily um, sugarcoating it. We've got to give them the reality that, you know, this is a professional sport, it's a hard sport. Um, so we're trying to establish them uh, both from a, a mental standpoint, a character standpoint, and also from uh, establishing their talents to their full potential. Amazing, wow, so trying to pressure in the next generation of great athletes into cycling. Um, yeah. Now to transition a little bit more to focus on uh, virtual racing itself, Randy, um, as you said, you're trying to build a strong all around team. Um, what have you guys found, or you yourself even have found, is the is the hardest thing to adapt to when it comes to virtual racing? Um, well, right now it's probably timing. 
uh, the time of year is, is, is very difficult to, to be racing against teams that are just e-racing teams. They're firing on all, all cylinders. As of right now, um, the season's more or less during the winter time. And so the timing would be um, the most typical. Typically, we're coming off a full season of, of racing, and we need a little bit of, of rest and respite uh, that allows us to then move into the next season. So, yeah, I'd say it's uh, the timing by far. Winning is, is for sure. To focus a bit on Cycling BC's upcoming BC Cup virtual racing series, Randy, um, I assume you're going to be racing yourself as well. So let's talk a bit about your your personal goals. You know, at age 40, uh, it's it's not necessarily individual, but I would I would be um, I'd be mistaken to say that I don't want to see how well I can go right now. Currently hitting all time best from when I was doing this full time. And I, I really um, attribute that to the focus on the training and platforms like RGT that allow us to get the most out of our training. And then just like you, I'm also getting coached by Matt as well. And he's, he's, uh, he's focusing in on things that I'm good at. But to, to really highlight the things that I'm good at, I have to get better at the things that I'm not good at. My FTP is horrible. Um, so I can't use my sprint if I'm not there at the end and I don't have a bit of, you know, a bit left in the tank. So we're working on all those different pieces. Uh, so I want to see um, what level I can get to. But really, I want the I want the team to, to succeed. I'll have some individual successes, but I want to see the guys win. Um, so your uh, your squad's been finding a lot of success on the virtual racing series is especially the echelon racing um with matt getting the first yesterday and timmy coming in third so um, a nice abc podium sandwich um so how do you guys uh, generally structure your squad when it comes to a, a series like that yeah so we look at the uh we look at the course um you know different horses for different courses um, so we get to, you know, pick and choose and then just balancing out the schedules because we've got you know, riders that are in high school, college and working professionals. Uh, so we have to balance those things out. But to answer your question, uh, we've got a, we've got guys that are as tall as you know, six, five that put out monster power to, you know, our flyweights that are, you know, 120 that go uphill like they're flying. Um, so we, we pick and choose. Pick and choose. Amazing. Um, I just ran through that question sheet so fast because you have such good answers. I've, I've got, I got something else for you though, how we form the team. Uh, so we are, we are a nonprofit. Um, we are representing another nonprofit, which is above and beyond cancer. Uh, that, that is, um, it's near and dear to me. Unfortunately, um, cancer has really impacted my family. We, we all go through different things, right? Um, but it is you know, what we do with those, those difficulties that, that makes us who we are. And this organization Above and Beyond Cancer is, is living life to the fullest and going and living those experiences, getting out of your, um, what I call your trench um, and taking a peek up and seeing that, you know, yeah, you're going through some stuff right now, but there's a lot more out there that you can go do. Uh, so we are trying to uh, not only inspire, but be inspired by these individuals and go live life to the fullest. And to do that with this team, uh, we needed to start in a area of people that are the good quality people. So I, I vetted a lot of people, a lot of different riders, and I looked at the core of the individual as best I could. So as we were going through some of these RGT races, um, for me, it was more or less uh, working uh, through those difficulties and looking at the rider and how they handled a situation that may not have been perfect um, and making sure that we stayed on a high level and represented the team. So it was more RGT for me in the beginning was more vetting process to get to where we currently are. Uh, because I wanted good quality people um, around 
around the organization. And, you know, again, it's not always easy. And those difficult moments is when you show your true character. And uh, I believe we've come up with a great team. Yeah, you guys seem to be making a really big difference out in the world of cycling as well as further up. Um, and where where can we or anyone who would like to find the more information about uh, Above and Beyond Cycling as a foundation? And is there a place to make donations and such? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got two different organizations. Uh, for the team website, it's Heartland Velo, V E L O dot org. And then uh, for Above and Beyond Cancer, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just above and beyond cancer dot org. Uh, there is donations that they can be uh, made there. Um, they have uh, multiple, well, as we open back up from this pandemic, they'll have multiple different expeditions, both locally and uh, foreign that they do. They've got some great videos that gives you some nice um, understanding of what they're all about. It's led by Dr. Dick Deming, a uh, good friend and amazing human being. Um, he's doing some really, really cool stuff. And he's always he's always down for an adventure, uh, regardless of the situation. I mean, it's uh, it, it's it's pretty neat to see. Um, and it's it's fun to be around too. It's a great organization, great people running it and great people involved in it uh they're it's just it's a solid group of people um and it's all over it's primarily in iowa but it is spread out throughout uh, north america and the rest the rest of the world is as well so i highly recommend going to check those uh two sites out well, we will for sure thanks a lot for your uh, contributions to organizations such as that and we hope to see you guys doing well um in that regard yeah, absolutely. And Tom, hey, uh, looking forward to you coming down to the U.S. and doing some racing as well. And once those borders uh, open up as well, we want to come up to Canada. We were saddened to see that um, that BC uh, week, uh, unfortunately, is not going to happen. Um, yeah. I've never been to those races. We were already planning on going to them. Um, and we'd like to come up and do some of the other races in Canada, too. We've got four riders already up there. So um, look for us um, up in Canada and we'll look for you down here in the uh, United States. Yeah, we definitely will. Thank you very much, Randy.